Police say a local resident confronted and chased after Kelly with a rifle. Kelly got in a vehicle and took off, but after a short pursuit, police caught up with him and he was found dead in his car. CBS's Courtney Zabowski is in Sutherland Springs tonight, a town of only about 700 reeling from the worst mass shooting in Texas history. Between 40 and 50 people were attending Sunday services at the First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs this morning. At about 1115, witnesses say a single man with a gun walked in and opened fire on the congregation. As many as four dozen people were reportedly wounded, about half of them were killed. At least at this moment in time, there are 26 lives that have been lost. The gunman reportedly fled the scene in a vehicle. Police are said to have pursued him north into Guadalupe County. That's where the gunman was killed. It's unclear if he was shot or if he took his own life. The incident prompted a massive response from local, state, and even federal law enforcement agencies. The FBI and the Department of Homeland Security have already joined the investigation. Sutherland Springs is about 35 miles east of San Antonio. Today, one person described it as the kind of place where everybody knows everybody, including the people who were killed today. Courtney Zabowski for CBS News, Sutherland Springs, Texas. And the community there has not wasted any time getting together to support one another. Right now, they are gathering to remember the victims with a candlelight vigil. And that's where we find Brett Bruffington from our sister station, KHOU. Brett, in a town that small with that many victims, this had to have touched everyone there. Eric, tonight certainly a very emotional scene here a block away from the First Baptist Church. In this community of about 700 people, dozens of them in tears tonight, holding hands, comforting each other, and asking that question that so many across this country and around the world want to know tonight is why. In a community this size, it's hard to find someone who doesn't know someone who was affected by this tragedy here today and tonight in this crowd, in that comforting, certainly special moments as the governor met a line of people here who thanked him for coming to this ceremony or to this vigil tonight to mourn, to mourn with this community. Thank the governor for not forgetting about this small town again of 700 people here in South Texas tonight still trying to figure out what happened here this morning. Listen to this emotional moment with the governor and one of those people who came to that vigil earlier tonight. Thank you for remembering her little town. I've been here, my grandparents who grew up. Thank you so much. God bless you and your family. Of course, there was music, there was mourning, and certainly some healing tonight. People here finding it hard to figure out what to say as you ask them their emotions, how they feel about what's happened here in the community. That's the church about a block from where we're standing right now, and this is as close as many in this community are able to get to where this all happened this morning. There are certainly a lot of people trying to figure out who was involved. We've only learned the name of that one 14-year-old victim. I can tell you, Eric, I talked to someone who goes to this church, a 13 year old teenager who told me this morning he overslept and missed Sunday school. He would have been sitting in a Sunday school classroom with that 14 year old Annabelle Pomeray if he had made it to church this morning. We're live in South Texas. Brett Buffington, KHOU 11 News. Oh, what an incredible story. Thank you, Brett. And you know, there is a lot of information here, so if you missed any of it, uh, we have what you want to know so far, and we're going to keep updating what we learn on our website, WTSP.com. We've also are planning to send you any alerts to your phone through the 10 News app if there are any important developments.